And I remember you both, you and uh, Pankaj. Pankaj, you came to the our office in Malaya. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it took us about four months for you to notice our email that we sent to you. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't know that. What you said about large orders and solving solving for that. I think one big idea could be just ritualizing that whole large order delivery vehicles that bake on the way. And we are discussing Zomato product delivery strategy on. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, That's there. great. Dave, thanks for making the time. Pleasure, absolute pleasure to be here, Deepi. So tell me one thing: how many years has it been for you in the F and B industry now? Um, I've worked for about twenty-five years overall, mm -hmm. but in the F and B industry, I would say yeah, about eighteen years now. So bulk of my career i've been in the in the food service industry in general and uh, looking back do you think it was are you like fortunate or not to have been in the fnb industry have been absolutely fortunate mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that you know i uh, i used to work for a company called cadbury chocolates which mm -hmm. is now called mondelez mm -hmm. right and uh, before that i worked for whirlpool home appliances mm -hmm. so very traditional product marketing type company i had a background in marketing even today i don't consider myself as a true blue fnb or a food service industry person because my background was uh, more brand product marketing that's that's mm -hmm. what i did and then i when i joined uh, domino's pizza india limited which became jubilant food works when we ipoed it now uh, five six years later i joined them as a marketing guy not as an fnb guy mm -hmm. or not as a food service guy marketing and product and digital and all of that uh, area is what i used to handle and initially i joined it as like any other marketing job right uh, it could have been another package consumer package company or an appliance company or a or a automobile company uh, so that's how i came in but uh, now i guess you're calling me like an <laughs> fnb guy i still don't think i'm i'm an <laughs> fnb guy but yeah it's been absolutely amazing and i uh, i feel blessed that i especially you know made that move and then sort of rest is history and overall i think the principles you used to run a like business are the same whichever business to you you are running so that's why you won't call yourself an fnb guy because you're more a business person yeah yeah i think fundamentally i think of myself more as a problem solving person mm -hmm. right and i think of myself as a person who loves working with people mm -hmm. um especially creative people mm -hmm. uh, it's very it's not easy to manage creative people mm -hmm. and they have their own you know their own i think chemistry going on in their heads right so uh, yeah so i found managing creative people mm -hmm. is not an easy mm -hmm. easy easy job but uh, they are also the people who produce the most interesting outcomes right so there's a certain kind of i think leadership required and that's why i think of myself as those things mm -hmm. and any environment where those things are relevant problem solving working with people managing creative people thinking etc and and i think our food business allows you know like if you think of other some of the other consumer product industries right they don't have as many touch points as we have like you can think about your brand in a certain way but ad advertising and product mostly takes care of that's the end of it right but hamare i think food service industry mein it's probably just the starting point the store experience the staff the people how they behave what they do they represent all the products that you have uh, so i think there is a lot more i think on the execution side in bringing the idea alive you go to a nicely run restaurant you see their dna in little little little, little mm -hmm. things right so yeah i guess i enjoyed it a lot because here the i think the opportunity to translate thinking into several touch points is much higher in in the food business than it is in other consumer absolutely business. absolutely so uh, let me actually remind you if you remember i don't know 
but uh, we started Zomato in 2008. Yes. And at that time you were at... I um, was marketing at you Dollar. Marketing and I remember Dollar. you both, you and... Uh, Pankaj. Pankaj, you came to the office in Noida. Yes, I yes, know. yes. Uh, it took us about four months for you to notice our email that we sent to you. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I totally, didn't know that. Totally <laughs> legit. Like, like there was no merit to giving us a meeting at that time. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I think about three to four months you gave us our first advertising check as well. Like so. Yeah, yeah, I think when I first met you, what I remember about both of you is that you wanted our coupons to put in to put in your them. on your mm -hmm. website, yeah. and either it was you or Pankaj, and and I asked you like why should we give you those coupons, and you gave me a very simple answer. Anyways, you are giving those coupons out. Anyways, so you're, it was a, yeah, anyways, you are yeah. putting it on in people's letter mm -hmm. boxes and they are going to tear it and, you know, make orders. And I was like, yeah, but why would you want it? Like, why would anyone come to a website to mm -hmm. take a pizza coupon? And you guys will just give it to us. No, why are you overthinking this? <laughs> why are you this? overthinking this? So I was like, and yeah. I think you were nice to give us a separate coupon code. Yes. So, yes. and the, at that time, we were like, yeah, first we'll bring value to you yes. and then we'll ask. Yes. for something and the separate from... coupon code conversation was because you said or one of you said that we want to show you that this can also happen this can also happen yeah. and i think we were just starting online ordering at domino's mm -hmm. right this is pre google map days yes you do you know how we did online ordering back then no i don't. did i ever tell you that no 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 so uh, i heard that people are ordering pizzas on computers mm -hmm. right and till then the only thing i had i think i had booked a ticket on book my show so i knew like i'm i'm from a time when i think mm -hmm. dinosaurs were walking the planet as far mm -hmm. as digital <laughs> yeah. evolution is concerned right so i'm from that time uh and i had heard that us may people are ordering food on computers and uh, there were no aggregators then, right? Brands were doing their own mm -hmm. thing, right? And China made, not China, I think South Korea made it's become like a big part of the business. And me and a couple of others, Ajay call and us, we said, maybe come right? You know, we should also get people to order. Mobile to uh, thai And even that, at that time, big part of the business was 5-10% used to be kecha badta ja rahe, right? So even like, Well, I think, yes, it started like that. Mm -hmm. But it very quickly became fairly significant mm -hmm. for, yes. for, for that business. So uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was very significant, mm -hmm. right? But the story that I wanted to share with you, you'll probably know, know a little bit of this, is how did we do it, right? Mm -hmm. So we had, um, obviously, a delivery areas... Right, you know, in India, you can't deliver to a pin code. Yes. Right. You you have to deliver to certain parts. And yeah. Certain parts, while they are in the same pin code, are inaccessible for mm -hmm. for various reasons. So how do we like solve this problem? There is no database. There is no Google Maps. There is nothing. There is no external API that you can Correct. integrate your uh, you know your your solution into. So we booked these large kalyan mandapas. You know these marriage halls. Okay. Right where we got restaurant teams to come in and actually hard-coded every apartment, every building, every place that you could deliver. Brute force always works. Brute force. <laughs> so you actually went, selected a city. In that city, you selected an area and then you had to find your street or you had to find your apartment. Only then you can place an mm -hmm. order. If you can't, then you can't, right? Yeah. And there's no other way around this. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing. I still remember the first order to my friend Vivek Krishnamurti in Bangalore. Like, how to order place in Bangalore? Se. <laughs> Main Noida mein baitha mil gaya, mil gaya. <laughs> and the whole office was like, yeah, mil gaya. And I think that was the first time, uh, this was in 2006, 2007 maybe. This is the first time in India that somebody placed an order from a digital device and received it offline. Uh, so from there to now, yeah. <laughs> this conversation we are having. Like, and now we're doing millions of orders yeah, every day. Things have changed a little bit, yeah. I guess. <laughs> now I think people don't even want to order on the phone. It's too yeah inconvenient and outdated. I think, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. doesn't happen anymore at all. Unless mm. you're like calling somebody in your uh, apartment complex. 
एस्प्रिन भेज दीजिए इट्स बिकम दैट आई थिंक आई थिंक लार्ज ऑर्डर्स के लिए अभी भी फोन कर लेते हैं लोग बिकॉज आई थिंक जोमेटो एन स्विगी वी हैवन रियली हैंडल लार्ज ऑर्डर्स हाँ रेस्टोरेंट लार्ज ऑर्डर्स वी हैवन रियली हैंडल वेल येट तो आई एम सरप्राइज टू हियर दैट बिकॉज आई थिंक I think uh, on the contrary, a large order is where you need to sort of organize it properly, have a look at it, make sure that there's a visual visuality to a large order, whereas there is a auditoriness to a smaller order. Mm-hmm. I just need a chole bhature is easy mm-hmm. to order. No, but on large voice. orders, na, uh, uh, we have to send multiple multiple uh, ride multiple riders because in fulfillment, in, you mean in, in fulfillment. In That's where it becomes harder for us. Send the customer experience is not really what you would get in a small order. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in a restaurant, they would be better in control. Restaurants of, are fine. Restaurants are totally equipped to handle large or small. Well, yeah. we are not handled. So we, if we a restaurant handle. does the delivery of a large order and it's all. Mm-hmm. they use their cars or they use some they use their own infrastructure to be able to do that because they get like how many large orders do you get in a day one or two but yeah. uh, so if we, i think you are talking about really large orders i mean i'm i am talking 10000 rupee plus orders oh, okay so those okay. those are the ones which we yeah but that's probably a very small part of the but overall, crucial but crucial but it's crucial. actually critical yeah. right so and uh, but anyway we are solving that with a large order fleet now Okay. So we're dedicated to get, do, get, dedicated. dedicated only for large orders, like mm-hmm. like van kind of yeah. boxes. Yeah. They'll be heated as well, and so on and so. There are some so great on. examples of, uh, you know, ritualizing delivery through vehicles, and the heroism inherent in the delivery boy. I think you guys do a good job of that. Uh, I don't necessarily think you are the authors of that. I mean, I you think of some of the know. early, early pizza delivery boys, mm-hmm. and you know, looking back at the delivery made and all. Mm-hmm. There is an inherent heroism in somebody who is bringing food to you, right? It's, yeah, so it's a very Superman kind of a feeling with yeah. a cape and like here's a box. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. I was once working with Gulzar Sahab, I think, on uh, to write a script mm-hmm. to celebrate the delivery person, right? And the emotion that we were um, we were working with. was aayega uh, aane wala there is an anticipation in a delivery order you know i don't know if i've told you about this dikhi this is very interesting for somebody like you have you heard of the hate index i haven't so i mean i may be little bit off on the facts mm-hmm. but you get the spirit of what i'm trying to say right the hate index i think in the us maybe mm-hmm. was a list of uh, things that would get published mm mm-hmm. every end of every year end of the year hota hai na top 10 things that happened top best things that happened this year disasters of the year they have those list of things at the end of the year reflect on the year gone by to usme one of the things that somebody did some tv channel or some country it happened which was around what what were the things that people hated right top 10 things that people hated over so many years right because they had data of let's say 50 years of publishing the hate index so somebody got together and said let's analyze everything that's been hated in the world and they found that some things are repeating all the time right politicians financial institutions teenage children home delivery of food used to feature in the hate index okay and then they analyzed what fundamentally makes people hate something it's a great question to ask no what fundamentally makes you love somebody is a good question to ask equally is like you don't want to be hated right what fundamentally causes hate to be created in the world and they analyze i should look i should i should search this whole thing and find it and send it to you so that you don't believe that this is a product product of my imagination uh, but i haven't actually found this so i'm mm-hmm. starting to think it maybe is but how does it matter it doesn't as, matter as long as it makes sense it i hope it makes <laughs> sense to you in a minute what they found was that for you to hate something two things must come together one is it must be extremely important to you right if something is not important to you, you don't hate you don't care indifference right? so. indifference you'll move on yeah, yeah. right something is very important to you and two you have zero control over it 
whenever these two things come together no you start to hate it if you have zero control over something it doesn't matter as long as but if it's important to you acha if you something is important to you and you have control over it then you start to love it think of home delivery of food it is difficult to imagine that home delivery of food could be very important to somebody we don't think of it like that right but now think a little more let's double click this when you are super hungry right and you made an order at 1 pm till 1:15 the food is not super important to you yeah but at 1:30 you are really hungry at 1:45 you are now food is the most if you are hungry food is the most important thing in the world and somebody doesn't show up or shows up with the wrong order or gets it wrong and gets it completely what do you do at 1:45 you can't be angry at him and tell him ki bhai bhag ja nahi chahiye because you will go hungry right you're going to place another order at 145 this is going to come at presumably 230 till then you are dead like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know your whole whole day is ruined so to a hungry man the most important thing is food right and home delivery never give control to people in any way mm-hmm. right and i think that's what has got solved for in many ways with dominos pizza doing 30 minutes of free what was it all about it was about giving control back to you right okay if i mess this up i'm giving control back to you it's one of the biggest ideas in the world i think for home delivery and i think the whole app digital movement with you guys coming in fundamentally i think it's about giving control back to consumers and thinking about various dimensions of control one is ease of ordering one is all of this and as 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 you hear about solving this and i i, I got into this because of what you said about large orders and solving solving for that I think one big idea could be just ritualizing that whole large order delivery vehicles there are some good examples of vehicles that bake on the way you know that keep food hot on the way yeah. just sort of celebrating that oven oven on the move a car with an oven on the move uh and there are some great thoughts like that which I think can not just solve for the large order problem mm-hmm. but almost sort of give control back to consumers that hey in a large order you feel you are i we are discussing zomato product delivery strategy on <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs> on great. people will know where it actually came <laughs> where it actually came from yeah. where, that's very nice it's very nice yeah so there are all these are all very customer first principles that you're talking about in mm-hmm. terms of development of products in terms of development in marketing strategy which is actually product strategy also like the 30 like uh, minutes of free is not just a marketing strategy it's a product strategy and uh, i think uh, back then uh, dominos was not just about a pizza it was also about the 30 minutes of free the yeah. delivery according to me as a customer was more about that yeah. than the pizza because i could order a pizza from yeah. other places as well but yeah. nobody's ops were as good as dominos yeah. to be able to yeah. Yeah. offer a 30 minutes of free yeah i think at the deepest level it is about control mm-hmm. and that which i talked about mm-hmm. but the, you know there are several dimensions to it right if you think about india the idea of india itself mm-hmm. right um and see look at the evolution that it's gone through one is 200 years of 300 years of slavery followed by the nationalistic fervor post independence jawarlal nehru uh, green revolution bakra nangal dam poverty eradication so that there's a big idea followed by followed by i think the we lost it a little bit right we lost the plot china of 65 war emergency the mediocre 80s as they call it right everything was mediocre in the 80s like music <laughs> movies sports other than that one world cup win that we had right there's nothing really to write home about in that uh, phase it's like the mediocre 80s in a way and if you think about like 90s mid 90s onwards which is when all of these brands like dominos mcdonalds pizza hut kfc all of them entered in 95 kfc actually i think came in 91 and then came back in 95 96 97 96, but broadly that's the time all of these brands uh came in india that's also the time i would say around 2000 when karan johar started to make some of these nri type movies right there's a certain india yeah. shining idea the idea of you know 
it's like the first time we were embracing consumption in this country mm-hmm. like as if consumption is a good thing you know consuming will deliver the nation type of the idea which i think to some extent is there even now at that time somebody coming and telling you that i'll do this i'll promise i will deliver what i promise there was a film in which anupam kher uh, not anupam kher parish rawal says uh, that uh, that ambulance nahi aati hai aur ye 30 minutes mein aa jata hai right it's also a marker of uh, efficiency that i know i'll put my money where my mouth is i'll get it right and this is for a nation which is producing these this new identity like people who are successful are suddenly valued ceos global ceos are more valued than businessmen who had legacy businesses or film stars right these became our some of our new icons so i think the shift in narrative uh, was around professionalism getting things done you know let's 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 move on and i think it's very important for brands to be aligned to what's happening in in culture like in the bigger picture right mm-hmm. you might be good at what you do and you might be really special as a brand but is it aligned to the biggest force in the world and the biggest force in the world if it is that and you are aligned to that then i think you sort of ri- ride the breeze ride the wind as they say otherwise it's like shooting in into the you know into the into the uh, tornado it doesn't go anywhere so i think that was a very very interesting lot of interesting things happening in our industry for what was happening in culture of the country at the same mm. time and i think things happened like a lot of brands and a lot of things happened and right place right time yes industry has grown really well i think yes. i think we're still i think 10 times short of the us or china or any of these countries in yeah. terms of consumption of outside food yeah uh, i think home cooked food is still very 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 large but uh, i'm looking forward to the next decade to see where this goes yeah it's a very i think million dollar multi billion dollar question right <laughs> multi 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 <laughs> multi 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 billion <laughs> dollar question because yes it has grown a lot and ye- yes there are a lot of people you know participating in this at the same time and i think that is the biggest question that will it i think when you said 10x probably the penetration is even worse than 10x even right? worse maybe 20 30x yes even if you factor in if you factor out rural india and take 300 350 consuming 350 million consuming households even if you make that the universe even then the country is almost as big as the us which is roughly Absolutely. around that sort of size right uh, that those many million households and even if you factor for purchase power parity and if you factor for like dollar rupee discount and talk in transactions even if you do all of that i think we are what 15x smaller in terms of consumption Absolutely. versus what yeah. we could be right so at the one level is this question that is this going to be 15x and if it is going to be 15x is it going to be in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years right if it's, it's 50 years then it's just normal growth then it's not really happening if it's 10 years then or 15 years then it's really happening and and what might drive that right so i think the early early signs are that brands that represent americana brands that represent um a way of life which is of the other because while as a nation we are not necessarily very overtly american or western we are still i think somewhere nationalistic in our culture and our value system our consumption choices choices clearly seem to be aligned to there are so many chain brands which have grown in india which are american and western but not so many indian there are much lesser examples right and i don't think anyone has reached a point where you can say i can see 1000 stores or 2000 stores or 3000 stores getting formed right so it's a very interesting question and and i think the deeper question from that is that if image and a western narrative um culturally that's the hegemony today i think the american culture is the is the winning sort of idea 
beyond the point is that idea going to drive penetration to 10x 15x or some new ideas are needed to drive penetration right so i think a bunch of uh, things are actually happening right now and 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 i have started seeing a shift over the last couple of years only mm. and i think what you're saying is still largely true mm. but i think the i think india's pride in indian uh, products is actually at its highest right now in over the last few decades mm. right so i think people are taking pride in choosing indian brands mm. over western brands and that shift i'm starting to sense starting to you see. start you start we are starting to see biryani brands are killing it killing it right so i mean it might not be uh, like it's not hard to say that couple of biryani brands will get to a thousand outlets in the next decade mm. right mm. so and uh, and honestly now pizza is not about being an american or european or anything pizza is pizza now mm. it's a like universal food kind of a thing mm. and uh, pizza outlets home grown pizza outlets are also actually you know growing super duper fast it, it is not about bringing a western brand to yeah but it's in, still pizza still represents a idea of consumption which is outside of me even though it might be an indian brand it's, but it's still it's actually i think the customer psychology here is it is more becoming about new than about western mm -hmm. so that new could be western yeah. right but it's more becoming i want to try something new yeah. give yeah. me something different yeah. i don't want to eat the same thing over yeah. and over yeah. so and pizza is a one one of the accessible choices and uh, so many people don't even know where pizza is from mm. they just know it's new Is it, it is something different, yeah, yeah. and so so that's actually like starting to shift. Where so is the, pizza from, though? I have no idea, man. <laughs> and so many people claim it's from everywhere. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think this 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 shift in Indian Indian pride in Indian brands is starting to happen, and you can see it across fashion, across verticals, like the the whole. indian brands thing is really yeah. taking off so there's a new emotional idea which can drive growth which is indian brands right? it's, not even, uh, it's not even it's not even emotional actually okay. it's not even emotional i don't think uh, anything close anything even remotely re related to uh, patriotism or it's nationalism not no no so no, what's no. going on then i think it's just that uh, indian products are also being I, i i think the community has gotten to a point where the products are more tailored to the indian audience hmm. so the product market fit of yeah. indian like companies is uh, i mean indian companies are able to achieve product market fit better yeah. uh, because they know their audience really well yeah. i mean you take um, zomato and swiggy uh, Uber Eats came in, Food Panda came in. Like they were not able to really yeah. like yeah. get to the depth of the market yeah. because they didn't yeah. customize and tailor their products for India. Yeah, but just reflecting back on your multi, multi, multi billion dollar mm -hmm. question, right? I think, and I probably want to learn more from you than for me to say. But I'll pose a question, mm -hmm. right? If I think about all the work that i have done across brands right i have always thought of what we are bringing to the consumer as being something of a slightly special occasion offering for him right like across the brands i've work, worked on right either it's something kuch to hoga maid didn't show up so let's order yeah somebody suddenly comes home and we are not ready so let's order yeah let's boys come home let's order some beer and biryani and pizza or match hai i'm not saying super special occasion also like anniversary yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not even talking about all that you're calling you're talking what triggers to order rather than oh, occasions to order yeah i, I mm. refer to everything as occasion yes. even this yeah, is an yeah. occasion right correct yeah uh, one thing i've learned in the food business as this consumers here are not segmented by anything other than occasions absolutely people in the same occasion behave similarly irrespective of who they are right so i refer to everything as occasion yeah. and i refer to those occasions as special occasions right i think the journey from from point 1x to 1x has happened mm -hmm. by addressing slightly special occasions and what the food industry has really done so far and i think the 15x journey is going to come if we start to address more functional occasions which i don't see anyone doing 
anyone scaling, not a single example of, of that happening. And I think I'm very curious about that space. So brands that represent better for you, brands that are healthier, brands that you can have, you know, just like that, just alone, I, I, I want to have lunch. I think that segment is, you'll, you'll know better, but I think that segment is still smaller and something that is more indulgent and special and 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 almost thoda sa celebrate thoda sa different from my normal day correct so are you starting to see that and do you see that that's the pathway for this 1x to 10x journey i think that certainly i mean i think 1x to 3x can happen with our special occasion, occasion itself itself yeah. but beyond that we'll need to you know, cater to the functional use cases hmm. and uh, but I don't think the industry is currently thinking about uh, getting into that zone because they, they see the, everybody sees the 1x to 1X 3x, 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 3x yeah. price yet, yeah. right? And uh, that 1x to 3x comes from serving the top 5, 10-ish percent of the audience. So there is a huge uh, impetus to push the prices up, yeah. create more value, charge <coughs> higher, therefore our margins are higher. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I mean, there is there is nobody yet, which I've seen maybe a couple of examples come to my mind, but nobody who is focusing on pushing prices down. Mm-hmm. Because, okay, I will get my ops really uh, sorted, I will build the supply chain, I will do this, I will do that. And I will try to bring the price down and s- still serve a hot, fresh, high quality meal to the customer in 15 minutes at lunch so that they don't cook at home. Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, to, <clears throat> like if you have to target cooking at home, the the price of the food that you order has to be almost within 10, 20, 30 percent of the, mm. what it would cost you if you cooked at home. Right now, the differential is high. Mm, mm. Right. And I think why uh, why the restaurant industry has gotten to such a point in the US or China is that the cost of cooking the meal at home and cost of eating out at a restaurant is almost the same. Mm. So it's not very different, hmm. right? And uh, <coughs> how do restaurants make money out of this price parity here? Hmm. Is hmm. because they are large scale operations. Their supply chains are efficient, right? They are they are sort of a shared uh, like uh, economy for hmm. kitchens, hmm. right? A restaurant is a shared a- yeah. economy for kitchens. Yeah. Less number of manpower, like and so on and so on. Yeah. So so there's less wastage. Yeah. So. Home kitchens waste a lot more food than restaurants do. Yeah, yeah. Correct. I mean, you factor all these things. That's where the yeah. restaurant industry in the U.S. and China makes yeah. um, makes money. Here, we haven't, as a like industry, we haven't really gotten down to the nuts and bolts of it and saying, mm. okay, supply chain is also my job. Mm. Right now, the industry is mainly feeding off the current supply chain, which is largely broken. Mm. Mm. So, if the restaurant industry sort of goes, uh, I mean behind the value chain goes back the value chain and then say okay i'm going to bring the prices down right right, right? that's when we start scaling right, right. but but i think that's a like that's a journey it's also in evolution itself. i think evolution i mean first we'll do the one two three x then growth rates will slow yeah. down people will stress out yeah. <laughs> and these answers will come uh, also i think in terms of the brand the way we think about these brands and the way that we think about Beyond the three X, I'm saying, mm-hmm. right? The way we think about these brands and the way we think about what they offer, perhaps those are also some new ideas in the in the in the industry than there today. Absolutely. For example, when we think of everyday food, we don't think of today anything beyond dal chawal and that. Maybe there are some. Of course, value. I understand your point around value. That unless it's value, it's not going to break that barrier. But I almost challenge that thinking by asking the question that for the 4% who is ready to pay, right? For the 4% who is ready to pay slightly higher price, even for them, functional brands that create habit have also not come. So we're trying this uh, every day, Zomato every day. Yeah. It's a, it's almost like we have, so what we do is we source fresh veggies from the market that day. Mm. We cook food at your, I mean, actually we work with restaurant restaurants. Uh, catering like partners like compass mm. not really restaurants because mm. they can't handle yeah, that yeah. much scale yeah. uh, right so we'll work with somebody like compass and then the customer gets 
that okay these are the four fresh veggies available today the, 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 these are the two that are taken off dp that's my point why is that why is it stick has, it, has? Okay. it has the every day uh, has six locations right now okay and uh, those six locations are six of the top eight highest order throughput locations okay. on zomato okay so to me this is very interesting right because i think one is this whole access value efficiency that question which i think in time will happen as you said it's an evolution and other is this more intellectual brand design product design question right where it has to be i think healthier more every day yeah. but healthier every day but not boring yeah not boring it still has to be sexy right it has to be a new the menu has to change every day yeah and the the whole thing with this is that you can't plan this one day in uh, advance as well yeah so you literally have to go to the market yeah. that day yeah. and see okay and see to manage prices now so you also have to go to the mandi that day and say which veggie is available for cheap today hmm. because the demand sub demands supply fluctuates the prices very very widely hmm. Hmm. right so we actually have to tap into those price fluctuations on yeah. that yeah. day itself and make those it's things. almost like you're saying ki the brand is so attractive because it's it says that i'm seasonal yes main aapko wo season ka hi vegetable khilaunga it's actually built to be seasonal built to be seasonal built to because be one you should be eating seasonal food mm-hmm. right and two because it's i can get it cheaper to you it's actually variety you know and the uh, and the last time you ate ghee from us and the next time you had it two weeks from the recipe will also be different, also be different. and it will be grown also nearby so it will be cheaper grown. and uh, so we so. have moms and home chefs guiding and cooking so it's a very so it's a community thing so i think that's a billion dollar idea then it's very far off to visualize how to how to for us it's not about making that a business to be very honest mm-hmm. right so we don't want this to be a business for us we want to as i said na we want to create and tackle the supply chain which is required yeah. to build this understand the principles of how this works because these kind of experiments cost a lot of money yes and we can't expect restaurants to do this for now yeah so we're like okay we have the next couple of years let's actually build the front end products let's build the signs let's actually like get the supply chain sorted and then we'll open this up to people and can you please do it yeah now like we have franchise or yeah. give them the intellectual idea and like let them we, like we do the zomato normal business today mm-hmm. we say like, okay now we have the tech and stuff now you please do it yeah. right because see if we have to do this on our own it's going to be impossible to pull that off mm-hmm. the scale is very very high yes, yes. what can we get to six kitchens to 500 kitchens to 1000 kitchens what will that move you need 30000 kitchens for it to be probably really more yeah. probably more i mean those 1000 kitchens are not going to move anything mm-hmm. in anyone's mm-hmm. life sure. so for us it's more about perfect the science sure. right and understand the like customer side psychology build the tech product build everything so it's like a super lab idea for you super lab and the idea is to just like make the make the research like paper from the lab hmm. and then give it to people ki yaar ab aap kar lo ab aap kar lo because it's a tough one and hmm. supply chain bhi sort out karni hai yahan pe hmm. right and supply chain is hyper local yeah. and hyper pure and blinkered so many people are yeah. kicking in yeah. and like trying to orchestrate yeah. this to yeah. make this work and yeah. ideally I, i mean three years down the line i would love for restaurants to like these hyper local everyday type of restaurants to order stuff on blinkered Mm. whole say blink it whole say let's envision that mm. there is a blink it whole say mm. order it from there make that menu for a day upload it on smarto in 5 minutes capture orders deliver it in lunch sounds in like nearby areas. sounds like you need to go one lower deeper almost farm and I'm, i'm i'm almost hearing you but back end of blink it goes to the with farm, the farm yeah. mm-hmm. so we're already starting to work with farms so there's so much back end work being done there to are be able off, to of late some guys in my previous role i encountered a lot of guys who were trying to solve the problem at the farm level through technology also but through sort of real depth in sourcing uh having seeds in the mandi um a lot of lot of I think a lot of work is happening in that space. I don't know how across you guys are to that. I think, I mean, we are very early into this, mm-hmm. but I think uh, the the current insight that we have, which will most likely turn out to be wrong, <laughs> is that 
is that uh, we need to be able to predict the demand that we take to the farm. So we need to tell them, can you please plant this for next year? Hmm. Okay, because the un because if the farmer is not certain, then they do so many things hmm. and like and if we can give them the demand and the like purchase order for next year, then their whole confidence cycle and the financial cycle sort becomes of far more efficient. Far more efficient, far. and actually confident and has less number of people to deal yeah. deal with. The farmer makes more yeah. like money. Organized farming can expand. So, so many things, mm. but but I don't know whether this is the right answer or not. Mm. I'm still trying to figure this out. Mm. I think the uh, in the initial years, it's tough to envision because the, this as part of his total production is still very small. Yes. But in pockets, if you can see that happening, it could be a great pilot for you to say that it can happen, In it can technically happen. The, the, the problems that happen to a business at a small scale are very, very different from problems that happen to a business at a larger scale. <clears throat> so, yeah, whatever, whatever DOE, design of experiment, we consider in a situation mm -hmm. like this, obviously has to ask the question, is it representative of how things are going to be once I take it out? So when I say pocket, what I mean is, a, uh, is there enough demand in an area that the that Zomato can almost be significant in the total production that is happening in that area at the farm level? For example, you have so much depth and penetration in Gurgaon that 100 kilometers around Gurgaon, the farms that are there, for their future forecast, you could make a meaningful prediction. But see, that's why actually the underlying reason why we did hyper pure first was to be able to affect the supply yeah. chain. Mm -hmm. And then Blinkit plus hyper hyper pure volumes can accelerate our journey towards uh, being able to predict that yeah. in a hyper local area. Yeah. Hyper pure alone wouldn't get there. Blinkit alone yeah. wouldn't get there. So we had to do home cooked plus restaurant food combination, yeah. Blinkit plus Zomato, and uh, so to be able to get there. Yeah. So to sort of accelerate I, our journey. I think there. it's possible. I think it's possible because if I look at all the large uh, food companies that make packaged goods, they yeah. have they have this, right? Yeah. I think the advantage they have is that they have narrowed it down to a few farm ingredients and a few products. Your challenge is that it's Spread across many categories. Packaged and, and fresh are two different volumes. As I, well. know, I know. Paradigms completely change. I know, I know. So we have to hyper locally predict. So now our Zomato everyday wastage is down to 3%, 4% kind of a level. Mm. So which is good, mm. right? So I mean, just perfecting the science. Mm. And then we have even to large know. catering companies, without naming even large catering companies, uh, when they become very large, mm. they become very large, you mm. know that, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of they at some stage become very large and their procurement organizations become powerhouses. Yes. Right? Offline, maybe I can talk a yeah, little yeah. bit more to you about it. But they become powerhouses where they start to make that the differentiator. Absolutely. More than <coughs> the front-end business as well. And they are as diversified as, as, as yeah. you are. But in India, it's not been done. India has nobody not been nobody done. Has so done. we are trying to, and I think in the, in the next three to five years, we'll be able to get to a point where we could, we will be able to make a, significant impact on the food value chain mm -hmm. on the quality of food i wish you all the best that. with this initiatives because i think this is real deep meaningful work that can affect we much started, more than, we yeah. actually started working on this about seven years ago mm -hmm. with a with a view that this will take us 15 years to build move mm -hmm. right so the keep i mean so i don't know yeah if it takes less or more but but uh, it's visionary I think, thinking i think I we're well we're well on the journey yeah. i think more than like visionary, it's more like patience. <laughs> it needs patience. Visionary and patience go together, I think. <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to do these things. I don't know whether and when we'll we will get there. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. So uh thode generic questions for you. Oh. Um you have you have you have seen a lot of restaurant brand brands, built a lot of restaurant brands. In general, a average restaurant out there. What mistakes do they make according to you as a consumer or as a professional? As a designer editor. of product, let me say first. Mm -hmm. I think most guys who, you know, that famous airline industry joke, right? 
that how do you become a millionaire? Has, I don't know. Has I, anyone I, asked I, you? I don't know. How do you become a millionaire? First, you become a billionaire. <laughs> then you <laughs> open and start an airline. You'll become a millionaire, right? So I asked this. So many people have come to me saying, "Ki, bhai, hume na apna ek restaurant khola hai apne ladke ke liye, theek hai? Ya franchise hi leni hai apne ladke ke liye." So I asked them, "Ki, how do you become a crore pati?" So the joke is, "Pehle ab das crore kamaiye, fir ek restaurant kholiye, ab crore pati ban jayenge." And I think this is the biggest people mistake that people make. I think they try to open a restaurant because one, they think it's very easy; two, they think it's very sexy and three it'll give their son or daughter or whatever something to do right it's completely the wrong motivation for opening a restaurant i think this is the biggest mistake and if i look at any restaurant that i like to go to or any place that i like to order from it's always that there is a sense of authenticity in them and authenticity for me in this business doesn't mean that you know they do a very authentic some cuisine bahut achhi recipe banate that's not what i mean by authenticity what i mean by authenticity is that they have an idea of the world and they do whatever they do very well to that idea that could be a stupid idea also it may not not many people may like it but wo ek honesty se uske piche lage rehte hain and that shows that shows in the furniture that shows in the staff sometimes shows in the packaging packaging shows in the food in the taste yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it shows in the lack of innovation in the brand there's a restauranter who came to me recently he runs a very successful but small chain of chinese i won't name them chinese restaurants a good friend of mine we got together and he can obviously see a lot of things happening are all around him you know new concepts coming up creative balls and this and that and these guys run a very you know something very special so my my advice to him was don't try to become somebody else there is a authenticity and a simplicity in what you do be in touch with it and and respond to it and i don't see that in many many places you know i see all sorts of things the packaging and the and the and the and the people and the product and the furniture and the decor don't talk to each other they are just picked up randomly from what is it from some google search or pinterest i guess <laughs> and what is the local trending restaurants so you get an idea of design maybe it doesn't talk to your food at all maybe it doesn't talk so to me that is the biggest thing what do you fundamentally if there is one consumer business where this is very important it is the food service industry absolutely and i think uh, here you can easily tell whether this burger was made with love or not yeah khane mein na matlab the ingredient of love is yeah. super duper evident yeah. like it's very easy to do they know them. what they are talking about yeah. or not right and if they don't especially going out even or ordering in mein ho gaya hai mujhe to lagta hai abhi but <clears throat> if you uh, if you don't see that right then you feel ki i'm wasting my time this is not a because when you go out to eat something na we are not just consuming the food we are consuming so many things people just use the word experience what is that experience a well designed well done restaurant is stimulating intellectually it's it grows you right you feel great about that ki yaar kya maza aa gaya ja wo maza kya hai khane mein khana uska ek part hai yes. but it's i think not the not the biggest part absolutely so to me that is what i think most people miss out on when they think about so it can i click summarize this ki people are running this business for business sake yeah and not with a passion they, they to don't serve, love it passion to they serve don't love passion it. to create passion yeah. to see you may not even have a passion to serve but you are passionate about something right you are passionate about like you believe delight that, passion uh, to delight is, somebody at least like apne liye kar lo yaar main to kehta hu forget about others apne liye aap ek true honest product banao theek hai it may still not work because you are the only one who likes it yeah. but i think that's a starting point you must get it you must believe that this is i think you can't hack your way into it acha ek time tha jab hack karke bhi chal jate the restaurants kyun chal jate the kyunki tha hi nahi supply उस एरिया में कोई बैठने की जगह ही नहीं है 
तो यू ओपन समथिंग दैट लुक्स लाइक अ रेस्टोरेंट हियर्स अनदर स्टोरी दैट आई टेल फॉर बिफोर नाइनटीन एटीज ऑल द रेस्टोरेंट्स इन इंडिया थिंक ऑफ देयर नेम मोती महल सुख सागर शांति सागर अ जनरल आइडिया ऑफ रिलैक्सेशन इज वॉट दिस स्टैंड फॉर राइट शांति का सागर है भाई हमारा है ना सुख का सागर है सबके नाम ऐसे ही होते थे राइट बिकॉज द रेस्टोरेंट जस्ट रिप्रेजेंटेड अ स्पेस एयर कंडीशन वे यू गेट अवे फ्रॉम द रिगर्स ऑफ द आउटडोर ऑफ इंडियन स्ट्रीट्स and come in and and that's all that's all they did right and somebody with a nice bow tie he will come and everything was over the top even the names of the dishes if you see mm-hmm. in our old indian restaurants what are the name of the dishes they're stupendous right like jhilmil sabji and you know shahi nawabi very removed from every day that's where it was rooted in ab waisa nahi hai ab there is somebody who's talking about a changmai train station noodles who's intellectually taking you on the journey of somebody's making hawkers fried rice with yesterday's rice you know there's a conversation in that so there is it's an intellectual space somebody actually probably believes in that mm-hmm. right that that's special to be brought here somebody's making a tough guy burger because it represents a maybe a mass adult idea of of food so i think that's the point that rather than trying to hack it and create something that is just a business you believe in something up delight and serve wali baat next aayegi but it won't be born till you yourself love it and you think and be authentic to that the why has to be solid hmm. right so in why in this business doing... it has to be very very, very solid yeah. and it can't just be mujhe रेस्टोरेंट खोला एक रेस्टोरेंट खोला या अच्छी डील मिल गई दो लाख में रेंटल मिल गया चार लाख की प्रॉपर्टी थी आप वो दो लाख रेंटल वाली प्रॉपर्टी में भी लॉस ही करने वाले करेक्ट एंड एंड दैट्स द अदर थिंग आई मीन रेस्टोरेंट इंडस्ट्री का जो नॉर्मल वो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर्व है 80% ऑफ द रेस्टोरेंट्स एवर इन लाइफ हैव मेड अ लॉस लाइक नो मैटर व्हाट डे एंड एज वी आर लिविंग इन लाइक 1960s 50s 80s 2000s लाइक 80% ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट्स एक्चुअली मेक अ लॉस so people need to be more thoughtful about getting yeah, into this case it is intellectually we discussed just now it's mm-hmm. tough mm-hmm. to you know crack it something that makes that everyone loves it's tough mm-hmm. to crack it right and uh, then it's also very tough place to be in like you just to run this business all the licenses that you yeah. need to get you need to you know manage on the street you need to manage your yeah, yeah. restaurant staff loss prevention bill uh, fridge bill <laughs> fridge uh this lost prevention is a more <laughs> sophisticated way of saying it um and um yeah just capital assets you know maintaining them making sure that they operate it's a very tough tough place to be in i think only somebody who is madly in love with this right i think my my views they shouldn't do it because it's a, it's a it's a business that mm-hmm. that looks attractive to mm-hmm. so, एक आई मेटे रेस्टोरेंट ओनर उसने अपने लोगों पे लगाया हुआ है ओरिजिनल पिज्जा फ्रॉम इटली 1969 एंड आई वाज लाइक हाउ हाउ ओल्ड इज दिस रेस्टोरेंट ब्रांड थ्री इयर्स इटली गए हो कभी नहीं गए हो देन यू सी है ना तो दिस इज लाइक ऐसी ऐसी ऐसे बहुत मिलेंगे ऐसी भी चीजें होती रहती हैं ऐसे बहुत मिलेंगे आपको यू विल फाइंड <coughs> somebody has opened a uh uh burger place but 60% of their sales is coming from pizza right but the place is a burger place yeah. you know a hardcore burger place and nothing no burger in 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 them has any any anything to stand anything out to stand for, out for. Yeah. like they have no point of view on burgers mm. they like some let's say let like anyone who's listening this wants to open a burger chain i think the first question they should ask themselves is are they are they participating in the adult grown up category or still the mcdonald space where lot of young people are first time you know touching americana that's the first question they need mm-hmm. to ask if they ask the question that they are participating in the adult space they need to ask is it going to be a bar and is it going to serve you know burgers mm-hmm. in 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 a way like that or is it still going to be fast food so if you the fundamental questions itself will separate out your brand into two separate spaces correct 
right? With an adult burger place, you would be probably competing not with any other burger joint, but maybe with bars and maybe with places like that. Um, so, but people who get it, no, they get it. They get it. They, they get do it. it so well. They, they do, do it, it so well. well. And that's yeah. why we keep going back to hmm. those restaurants and, you know. And that. we have seen such good growth stories over the last five years. Yeah. Just five years also. It's I don't know so if Riaz, have you spoken with Riaz mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. on, on, on this? Not right. on this yet. But yeah, but yeah. somebody like him, if you see his space, mm-hmm. right, he really gets it. Yes. Right? Yeah. You can go there and, you know. They feel personal to you, like the, his spaces. You yeah. get it. It's authentic. In mm-hmm. that social menu, he saw a staff meal. Karke usne dala wa. Right? Because it's such a, mm-hmm. I think it's a authentic yeah. to the idea of a cool youth place. Yeah. yeah. So I called up and I said, I had that staff meal. So I said, how staff meal? He said, no, who eats the staff is the same meal. He makes it for them, we serve it. Right? And it's a staff meal. Hai. And it comes in one you know, very nice, simple plate. And so there are many, many examples. Yes. Right? Some of them have been on your show. Yeah. And I think anyone who's opening up should learn from these guys. And I think one other mistake or one other thing that people should think about when they open or start something is that whether what I'm creating is going to capture share from somebody else. Or is it going to create a market for itself? Mm. Or or is it going to grow the market? Yeah. So I see a lot of this thing that okay, this restaurant is good. I have a place where it's been open. I have a place where it's been copy-paste the menu without any thought. I will put it in the menu. It will be a little bit of Like, okay. And, but that like, never works. Yeah, yeah. 5% doesn't sell the sale. Yeah. Move yeah. Yeah. Adi chodo, if you, you know, if you look at the biggest example of this, it is the lookalike pizza shops to Domino's. There are many of them. Mm-hmm. I think they have also now learned this, that you can't just be that to be successful. Yeah. And over time, you see many of them starting to stand for something different, mm-hmm. starting to change a little bit and then starting to maybe get some traction like you were saying, there are many of them. But I fully agree that this is not another uh, nuts and bolts hardware shop business. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a combination of art and thinking and culinary and service it's a very special mm-hmm. special place who knows be. maybe a, ha- a hardware shop is also about art we don't know we that. don't know yeah <laughs> let's, let's let's not be, let's not be presumptuous i always use the hardware example but yeah even a kirana shop i we should not say because we don't uh, know. man we we do blink it now kirana store is a nightmare different like it's though. it's so much math so much art so much Usme science apne like, uh-huh, wo yeah. alag hai wo. correct correct i take right. that back zomato <laughs> zomato it sounds so much more simpler than yeah. like Blinkit. Blinkit has like wow. 10x. Blinkit is 10x uh, more yeah, complex yeah. than Zomato. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for a lovely chat and looking forward to connect after this as well. Thank you so much. And I wonder from our first conversation in 2008, where it was about coupons, the growth has been, your growth has been, I don't know, like million times. So if once we meet 10 years later from here to another million times would look like a very interesting place. But the first million times was also largely driven by the coupons only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish uh, that reflected in some, <laughs> in some other way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Pleasure being here.